some things to do. Hopefully this is cozy for you because it's probably not going to be cozy for me doing all the things. I have a list of what we're going to do today. So I'm gonna do a few plant chores. Nothing needs watering apart from upstairs. Now I'm aware you haven't seen upstairs. So I will take you on a, not a tour of it, but I will just water things and I will just show you what is there. I'm not going to tour it. I can do that at a different time. That's absolutely fine. I need some advice on a philodendron McDowell. I'll show you that in a bit because ugh, it, it's a long story. I'll explain it when we get to it. I have to get some snacks for the cinema. Yes, I know. I'm going to a cinema double bill. Not today, but I want to prep everything in advance because I'm very, very busy. I basically got loads of work to do before I go on holiday. I'm going on holiday in a week, but obviously I have loads of videos with sponsors and deadlines and things like that. So I kind of need to get cracking with that. I'm going to be trying out a pest control cocktail. That's just my name, that's not actually what it is. I'm gonna be trying out some DIY pest control for my plants because I mentioned this before, but the stuff I use at the shop is not okay to use at home. So I'm having to get a bit creative and come up with some stuff. So I've got a recipe that I found on the internet. I'm gonna make it together. I'm gonna to spray everything. I'm gonna keep you up to date with it. I will tell you what the recipe is when we get to it. So if you're interested, you can try it. Bear in mind, I have not tried it yet. Hopefully it is good. I wanna to talk to you a little bit about what I've been doing to relax. You know, things I've been reading, stuff like that. That's something that I've been doing very, very recently. I've made a few changes because I'm just, I'm too stressed guys. And I find myself just sat in front of the TV. So that's not good. I'm trying to eliminate that a little bit. Oh, I have some new bedding that I'm gonna put on the bed because it happens to be my girlfriend's favorite color and it's also her favorite type of bedding. I know, so I wanna put that on really quick. But also, we're actually going to go and see my pony today because loads of people have been asking to see him. I know it's not really planty and I won't, believe me, I won't bore you with loads of it, but we're gonna go and see him and take him around the block, I think, because I don't have a ton of time today. So I'll just do a short little ride out. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, then keep on watching. Hello, hello, and welcome to my bedroom. Uh, it's probably really overexposed. It will change as soon as I leave the camera frame. I'm going to change the bedding because I found this, right? Let me tell you, sage green is my girlfriend's favorite color. She's coming over maybe in a day or so, but I want to get ahead of myself and change it today. It's fine. So I'm gonna quickly change it because these are dual wash anyway. My fitted sheet on the bottom is not dry yet, so I'm gonna have to change that in about 10 hours once it's dry and just peel off the doobie and change it. I want you to be able to know how nice this is, but it's basically like a cord, but it's so unbelievably soft. It's gorgeous. If you're in the UK, I actually got this from Argos, but you might be able to get it from Sainsbury's actually, because it's by Habitat, the brand. I have it in like a beigey oatmeal color. That's actually the bedding that's drying downstairs. We're gonna put this on because it's so pretty. It's so pretty. It might not go with the room, but I don't really care. I don't really care. Also, ignore the pain swatches. They have been here for two years now, two years now. I was going to pick, I think, this colour on the bottom that you can barely see. It's kind of like an off-white. You're now gonna watch an edit of me shamelessly trying to change a duvet, which has to be the most humbling experience anybody has ever had. So let's get cracking.
This probably now isn't really gonna go very well, but I'm gonna put it on anyway, just because I like it, but maybe it's good I get a cream one rather than a beige one. I know, my fault, but normally I have beige duvet covers, so it kinda goes normally. I also keep this on the bed as just like a catch-all tray for like whatever I need. So the minute there is literally like nothing in it, I have my remote for the TV, obviously. I have a nail file because nothing is more irritating than catching a nail. I have bubbles because you never know when you need them. I have my, <laughs> my remote for my crummy little light in the corner that I can change to whatever I please. It's cute. It obviously looks a lot better in the dark. And then I'm a bit weird, guys. I like to sniff this before I go to sleep. So, and sometimes put a bit under my nose. Is it bad for you? Don't know, but I do it anyway. So that can just stay there and that just sort of sits very unesthetically, to be quite honest. Now, did I need a new duvet cover? Probably not. I have plenty, but I, I saw this and thought of her. So I wanted to put it on. It looks a little bit weird with all the beige, but it's okay, it's okay because everything else in the room is so neutral. I'm not that bothered. I mean, you can't really be bothered about the color of this and then deal with those paint swatches. So you feel me. Ah, done. Cover's done. The next things we probably need to do, I'd rather do plant care when I got home, I think, and then we're just here and then I've got the rest of the day. What I'd rather do now is, in some order, go and see the pony, get the snacks and whatever shopping I need to get, and then I can come back, depending on what time it is, I can have lunch, and then we can get through some plant chores. So I'm gonna get changed and we're gonna go to delivery. Hello, so we're in my car, we're ready to go and it started raining. So I'm going to still go and see him and show you him, but whether we ride will highly depend on what the weather is like when we get there. But I'm going to drive now. He's only 10 minutes away from me, you know, it's pretty good. One moment, guys. Let me just make sure that I don't kill anyone in the next two minutes while I pull out of this junction. So I thought, while I'm driving there, sorry, I realise there is a format shift. Um, I can't, I don't actually have any facilities to put the camera on in my car because it's not something I really do, right? I don't really drive with a camera on, so I haven't really had time to put those together and I don't have anything to attach a nice camera to my car. Maybe if we did more stuff then I would. Can I have some more windscreen wipers please? Thank you. Um, yeah, so I thought I would tell you a little bit about my pony because I haven't, I mean I've said bits here and there but I haven't actually said that much. One second, another junction. See, I haven't really said much about him, I don't think. Um, the last you guys probably heard was the, oh god, the legal battle with the old horse. I haven't heard anything from him, by the way. I assume he's absolutely fine. I mean, owners don't always want to stay in touch, and that's completely their prerogative. You know, Oggy isn't mine anymore. I'm not in control of that. Last time I heard, he was doing fantastic, though. I know the owner's really lovely, so I have no worries there at all. But the new horse... I mean, I'm not going to tell you all the story of how I got him necessarily because it would take forever. Can I actually get through here? Sorry, there is fucking everything going on. I haven't said much about him and that is probably for another video. But I got him... It must have been late 2022. Um, because I think I still had Oggy in 2022. Which, wow, like, what did I have him, like, a year and a bit or something? That was crazy. So... I got him and I've had him like, what, two years now and honestly, he is the most gorgeous pony in the world. He is a Highland pony, so he is native to Scotland. He's, I think he's technically classed as like a draft. Sorry guys, this rain is hurtling it down. He's 14-1, probably with shoes on, to be honest. 
Um, but he is the love of my life, apart from obviously my girlfriend and my cats. He's my third child, basically. Technically, he's my firstborn because I had him before the cats. And I love him to death. His livery is 10 minutes away. I see him as often as I can, but believe it or not, with all the work I have to do, I don't see him as much as I'd like. Sometimes I only see him twice a week. I would absolutely love to get that up to like five times a week and I am working on it. I don't know. We'll see how that goes. I'm, I'm really doing my best at the minute, but work is just absolutely killing me. But I love him to death. He has the most gorgeous temperament that like, honestly, he's got the temperament of like an old dog. You could be like not a horsey person and walk into a stable with him and feel fine. Like he's fantastic with non-horsey people, which was something that was really important to me after the whole aggressive first horse fiasco. I knew when I met him um, in the stable the first time I met him. Obviously I, I searched for several horses before him and I viewed a few and actually vetted one of them, but it failed miserably and I was in tears over that. But anyway, along comes this little boy as soon as I met him in the stable, I knew, I, I literally knew, I thought, I just have to ride him okay now, that's all that is left to do, he just has to be okay with me riding him, and it's funny, when I, when I viewed him, I had like a experienced horse person get on before me, I remember she was cantering around, she just took her, she took her hands off the reins and just went like that, she was like, bloody hell, I got on. I rode him and because the woman that had him was kind of like sharpening him up a little bit for showing, he was, I was nervous and I was gripping a bit and my lower leg was swinging a little bit and it was just ever so slightly nudging him and it was obviously sending him forward. And it's funny because I couldn't really slow him down, right? But I felt so safe on this horse. I cannot communicate to you how safe I actually felt. It was incredible. Sorry, I'm steaming up. It's gonna get very noisy now. And I might have to pause this if this gets too noisy. Give me one moment. I felt so safe, despite not being able to slow him down or anything. It was wild. Like, after the first horse, I was just terrified of even riding. And I remember other horses, I didn't even want to canter and stuff. And if I was viewing a horse with my friend, she'd have to say like, come on, try and put him into canter or whatever. I just chose to with this one. And it was so funny because I sat quite deep in the canter because I felt so confident that he sort of, he became very extended. He started galloping a little bit, but again, I wasn't fearful of him. It's the weirdest thing in the world because normally something like that would send me into, oh my God, no, it's too fast. I, I, I can't control this horse. I just didn't feel that way with him. I just didn't feel that way with him. So anyway, his name is Barry. It is not my naming. Um, I had the option to change his name, but you, you can't do that when you've got a horse. You know, he was six when I bought him. Yeah, I know. Um, he, he, has, he knows who he is. You're not gonna change his name. So although it's not my naming, I'm not gonna change it. So that is his name, Barry. And I, I love him to death, guys. If anything happened to him, I'd be done. I would be absolutely done. He is my absolute world. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna change lanes again. Why not? See, I can't wait for you to meet him. I don't know what I'm gonna be able to do with a camera in there, but I'm gonna try my best, um, because I'm gonna have to strap a GoPro onto the side of the stable, because this shit is not planned, guys. It's really not planned. So we will see. We are here. Weather looks absolutely shit, guys. Won't lie, looks absolute shite. <sighs> okay. Okay. Oh, you've been rocking around there. Hello. Hello, darling. <laughs> oh my God, are you joking me? Come here. Mess. Wow, Barry. Wow, okay. Come here, but you bud. Oh, I know. Right. We find it. Oh, shit, I lost it. Come on. I don't know if anybody notices, but I have my left rein a little bit further out 
than what my right rein is and honestly this is because Barry has a little bit of a lean on most of the time he likes to lean a little bit to the right which is funny because so do I but I tend to keep it a little bit out just to keep him a little bit more to the left to kind of straighten him up now if he was on like a mega contact I probably wouldn't have to but I'm not there's not a lot of contact here as you can see by his head because I want him to have fun I just want him to know I'm there but I want him to have fun so I'm not really doing that but if you see there's it's ever so slight it really is slight but it's there so that's why one rein is just a tiny little bit out just to try and encourage him to straighten up a little bit but as usual he thinks everything's out to kill him because he's an overthinker like me oh boy oh come that's a good lad no we're not going to be fanning around with horses Barry come on come on good boy I've been meaning guys to take the camera off my chest and put it on my head I've not got round to it but it honestly it's it's going to be the next thing on my mind because I that's kind of what I'd like so the next time you see me ride him the camera will probably be on my head because if I turn around and I look at things you can't see that and I appreciate that so in future it will be on his head for anyone that wants to watch more hacking like this although there is not a lot of it don't get me wrong i will leave my channel link down below but the channel name is the highland life that's where you'll find me and baz so you can take a look on there and subscribe to that if you like i would love to do more videos for y'all for anyone that's interested you don't have to be an equestrian to come on baby you don't have to be an equestrian to get it if you know what i mean it's not it's not like that it's just me enjoying my pony so if that sounds nice something you might want to watch then feel free to subscribe to that baby can we go a little bit quicker taking the mickey now a little bit come on come on come on boy come on barry Oh my god thank god for an independent seat i tell you barry why are you trying like pure chaos stop stop woo woo no come on all right walk that's better and trot trot on let's get some power oh Good lad. Oh. Very well behaved though, look at you. Oh my god, you're beautiful, you know. Like you're actually beautiful. Hey? Hey big boy. You're stunning. I love you. Come on. Come on. Stand. Stand. Good lad. I know he's 14 one but sometimes I need the help right hang on he's expecting a treat <laughs> hang on what's this hang on <laughs> good lad ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, uh. Barry so still This way. Come on. You look so cute. So cute. Right in your house. In your house. Right, fatty. Oh, can you let me take this off first? Do you not think that'd be a good idea? Oh, you big boy. You big boy. So that was Barry. Hopefully you got a, oh God, a good enough look at him. I will probably try and make content that is a bit more, like you can see him a little bit better. 
So now, I have to fight to get my key out because it likes to lock up on me. No, don't be... No. Uh, what I'm going to do now, while I'm out and about in the car, you won't see it. I'm going to go to my supermarket, or the grocery store, you say in America, and get some bits and pieces. So, as soon as I get my key out, I will see you back at the house. Oh, right. Come up here. Good boy. What a good lad. Your brother's not going to be that well behaved though, is he? No, no, don't be doing that. Come on. Just sit down. Sit. I know. I know. No, no, it smells weird. I smell of another boy. <gasps> I smell of another boy. So, I went and bought my cinema snacks, right? I will show you the snacks that I've got before I tell you what the films are because it's going to lead quite nicely into a book I'm reading at the moment. So we're just going to take a little moment to chill. Hopefully the cats aren't going to piss me off. Darling, come up here. Come here. It's a naughty one. Go on. Oh, we everywhere. Go on. He doesn't weigh on the couch. He doesn't weigh on the couch, don't worry. I also need to tell you, I don't know how it works in the US, right, but in the UK, there's this weird thing in the UK, right, where people think that they can't bring snacks into a cinema, like it's illegal, right? Now, I actually was quite curious about this because I've sometimes brought snacks in. It depends on what I'm doing. I don't mind buying food there, that's not a problem. But the logistics of it this time are a little bit different. I'll explain that in a second. So if you actually go online, you can find out if the cinema you're going to allows you to bring snacks in. Now the cinema I'm going to allows you to bring basically cold snacks and drinks, but just not hot food or alcohol. So hang on, this cat, this cat. The reason I'm having to get snacks is because it is a Friday showing. It's not Friday yet, but I wanted to just be organized. It's a Friday showing. I have to pick up Amber from the airport at around about half past five in the evening. We then have to get back from Manchester Airport in rush hour. It'll take me an hour to get there. It could take between one and a half to two hours to get back. And the cinema starts, sorry, the movies start about half past seven. So it's a bit tight. So we're probably not gonna have time to really eat anything. So I'm building like a little, a little hamper. So for drinks, I'm a Pepsi girl. She's a Diet Coke girl. I have to stock both in the house. It is what it is, it is what it is. So of course we have drinks. Babies, sorry if you hear things guys, it's the cats. Cold savoury items. These aren't for her, these are for me. Tesco meat snacks, a little medley. Why the hell not, why the hell not? Love them, love them for me. I also have these, oh my God, I love these. Eight Gouda or Gouda and Chorizo Rolitos. It's so good. Not great for you, don't get me wrong. Let's not look at the macros on that, but we love them, excuse me. Billy, no, come on, get down. No, 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 not the lens, not the lens. That's kind of it for savoury. She loves these, I love these. Yes, it's vanilla, yes, it's basic, bitch. I don't care, we love them. Walker's ready salted. There is no better crisp out there if you just need them. So I have a few of those. Obviously, I'm not gonna bring the full bag, but you get me. So her favorite sweets, we have Harry Bowl Tang Fastics. I'm actually not a fan of Harry Bowl. I'm not sure why people are. I think they're quite overrated, but she likes them, so we're bringing them. Fantastics, love that for me. We then have, on the um, gummy, fizzy vibe, we have, I picked up these, they look a bit gay, love those. Fizzy multicolored belts, inexpensive, does the job. Sometimes you just want a bit of sherbet, if you know what I'm saying. So we've got some of those. Excuse me, babies. I love these, I love these strawberry pencils. Now I like to call them cables. They're those, I don't know what you have in the US, but they're like sweet on the outside and they've got like a, I don't know what you call it, like a white soft middle to them. I don't know. You know what I mean? When I show you this here, you should hopefully know what I mean. So I got some of those. Why not? I also got her favorite. Crunchy rocks. She loves them. She loves them so much. Like, she will eat a bag of these in two minutes. Which, to be fair, very easy to do. Very easy to do. She's such a tiny person. I Honestly, I don't know how she manages it. Uh, for me, and for her, obviously. What's mine is hers. Maltesers. Can't go wrong. Nearly went for minstrels, but I didn't. And I think the last one, I'm such an idiot. I asked her what her favourite, favourite, favourite chocolate was when she was last here. Right. And I can't remember if I've got it right or not because I forgot to write it down. I know, schoolboy error. So I bought them hoping that they're right. 
So I bought these. I really hope that they are correct. I'm pretty sure that's what she told me was her ultimate chocolate. So I have those. Now, obviously I have these for me. Amber doesn't like this sort of stuff. I can't find anything in Tesco that is going to keep for the next couple of days. So I'm probably gonna pop out and then go again on the day and then pack everything up and put them all into a little backpack. So that's what I've got for snacks. Just jumping in here really quickly to tell you about something that I am so excited about, and that is Fume. Did you guys know that flavored air is fast becoming the number one alternative to vaping and smoking? There's no need to even go cold turkey anymore when you have Fume. Fume is an award-winning device that delivers flavored air, yes, flavored air to your mouth, in order to help you ditch any bad habits that you have. No bells, no whistles, just flavoured air, literally. It is completely vaporless, so you can use it any way you like. It has no nicotine and comes in a bunch of non-toxic flavours. Not only that, but it has no batteries, so it won't die on you. And it's also been built to satisfy the fidgeters amongst you. Honestly, check this out. So the whole thing is built with magnets, so it just has some really satisfying clicking. But the best bit, the best bit is this. That is where you open and control the center mount. But the noise, the noise, the noise. Fume has a ton of delicious flavors to choose from. My favorite personally is crisp mint, which I believe could be their best seller actually. Not a surprise, because to be honest, mint is just so fresh, you just can't go wrong. For a limited time, you can use my code Kaylee to get your free topper for your Fume device. This just pops right onto the mouthpiece for a softer, warmer feel. It's basically like a rubber tip. Head to tryfume.com and use code Kaylee or scan the code on screen to get your free fume topper when you order your journey pack today. Now the movie we're going to see sort of lends into the book I want to talk about and the, the coloring book I have to show you. So the movie we're going to see, it's actually a double bill, hence the snacks, of the Terrifier 1 and 2. Now honestly, that's not a horror movie for everybody. Honestly, guys, it's not, it's not, it's not. She's never seen it before. That's gonna be great. That's gonna be absolutely great. I have seen them before. I'm sort of preparing for the the third one coming out, I think just after my birthday that I really wanna go and see. So I thought I'd get her up to speed. What better way to do that than to ply her with snacks, hopefully she's hungry, and let her see the first two before I then drag her to the cinema, kicking and screaming, to watch the third one. So we watch a lot of horror together, but I wouldn't say it was that kind of horror, but for anyone that doesn't know, the Terrifier is its horror. It's quite gory, which is genuinely not my thing. Like, I don't like slashers, but the reason I love these movies is for the antagonist in it, you could say, because of Art the Clown. Basically, I love Art the Clown. So I need her to understand everything about Art the Clown, so I'm going to take her. But that actually leads into very nicely something I've just, I was gonna keep this for holiday, but I've just started reading it because I couldn't help myself. I was having a really bad day the other day and I just couldn't bear watching TV anymore. I couldn't do it. I watched a few movies on Netflix, but I was just like, I'd need to, my mind needs to just do something else. So I started reading this, okay. This, sorry, I know I'm quite far out. Can I zoom you in a bit? This is a book by Aaron Beauregard. I talked about him a little bit on my really long report that I did, like, depends when you see this, two weeks ago now. I'm filming this like days later kind of thing. So he is an author whereby if you like movies like The Terrifier, you will absolutely love these books. They are horror books, but they don't shy away from most things. They're very gritty. I think you could put them in the genre of something called splatterpunk, so it is quite gory. Again, I promise it's not the kind of thing that I go for. In my horror, whether I'm reading it or I'm watching it, I'm very big on supernatural horror. That's like my kind of thing, like all of that, like sinister, insidious, conjuring, all of those types of movies are like my jam. So this isn't typical for me, but I guess the terrifying movies kind of break that for me as well. But I just started reading this. It's about a guy called, because he goes by his nickname, which is Red. He is called Patrick Blanchfield. I like Aaron's books because he takes you straight into it. There's no annoying three chapter backstory, which I'll be honest, bores me a lot of the time. So he takes you straight into it. So this guy, Patrick, also known as Red due to a birthmark he has on his neck and chin. He is in a bit of a financial situation with some, well, with a, with a very nasty crowd of people, if you could call them that, I suppose. And he owes them a lot of money. 
and he tries to, you know, ask for more time, blah, 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 blah. And they're like, no, 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 there's only one place for you. I think they call it the Shadow Shadows, which is an underground casino where, and I haven't got this far, whereby it looks like you play some really twisted games in order, I'm assuming, to win cash or whatever it is or to win your life. The way it's coming across to me is if anybody here has watched Would You Rather, it's coming off a little bit like that, which sounds super cool. So I'm supposed to keep it for holiday, but I started it. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm only like a chapter or two in, but I've kind of started it. So I might leave it where it is as I go on holiday in like a week and a bit. I might leave it where it is. I might read a little bit more. Don't know. I've left it at a really good point where he's sat outside shadows waiting to go in and waiting for someone to pick him up from the car park, the parking lot or whatever. So I might leave it where it is. It hasn't arrived yet, it arrives in about two days, but I bought another hard copy to take on holiday in case something went wrong and I read it or whatever. And I bought, oh my god, Home After Dark by, I think it was Riley Saga, Riley Saga. I bought that, so I'm going to read that as well. I don't know if Amber would appreciate that. I'm not sure. I'm not actually not sure what she likes to read. I think she prefers a bit of um, non-fiction rather than fiction, but who knows? So that is my plan anyway. So I have the other hard book coming and then I have this and then on holiday I'm probably just going to take my Kindle or whatever and then go through it that way. I asked some of you a few days ago what you thought about Audible. And I've had a mixed experience with Audible, guys. So I tried it and I downloaded my first book and it was The Hollow Places by somebody, Kingfisher, can't remember. It was on my reading list on Goodreads for a while. I'll drop my Goodreads in the description if you want to follow me, by the way. I don't use it much, but if you're interested. So I started listening to that, but the narrator has thrown me off so much that it made me second guess Audible. And maybe I'm just unlucky, but it, I felt like the narrator was like describing like creepy things. And they were just really like jovial and nonchalant when they're like reading. And I'm like, this ain't the vibe, honey. Like, no, like, I want to feel uneasy in my own house. Do you know what I mean? So anyway, I started this last night, the thing that I have on here. And I was coloring in adult colouring book, I'll get to it in a second. I was colouring in listening to one of Darren Brown's audiobooks, I think it was Happy, because it was narrated by him. So I thought, let's try and get the good side of Audible and do it that way. The thing I bought, check this out, check this out. This is an unofficial adults horror colouring book and it's got so many movies in it. This is from Amazon, by the way, I will link it down below if you're interested. It's pretty cool, to be honest. I don't know why I went with horror, maybe because I'm starting to read horror books, Halloween's coming, all the rest. Like, it doesn't have to be horror, but I just fancied it, I guess. It's kind of like my jam. Hi, baby, what are you doing? Hi, mommy's trying to talk about the book. Yeah. So, the movies that feature in this are Halloween, Get Out, The Ring, Saw, Midsummer, Hey Yo, Scream, The Exorcist, and said, and more. I know Candyman's in here. Uh, what else have we got? Psycho, Amityville Horror, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Dawn of the Dead, Get Out, blah, blah, blah. Suspiria. I was so shocked to see Suspiria in here. Like, they're not uber gory, like here's Suspiria, for example. Um, what else have I got in here? I like the Scream one, actually. So you've got things like Scream, things like this. Teddy, stop it. Teddy. No, get down. The Saw one, I simple, but I really love it. You know, I'm a big Saw fan, by the way. Big, big Saw fan. So yeah, that's the book anyway. I think it's got 30 different ones in. I, I thought I would start it last night to chill out, but I also thought I could give you a review on the Amazon Basic Premium Coloring Pencils. Literally, guys. Oh my God. So I'll show you what I colored in. I thought, let's do something I can add color to. So I picked the Midsummer one. Where is she gone? There she is. So I picked her. This is my terrible coloring skills. And I, I'm not terrible at shading and stuff, to be honest. But let me tell you guys, the way that I had to scrub these pencils onto the paper, I'm surprised I haven't gone through it. Like the skin color I haven't even finished because the pencil just died. I know like light colored pencils are notoriously worse, but Jesus Christ. But this is what I managed to do. We love it, we love it. I tried to create a teal when I don't even have teal. But, uh, and I gave a pop of colour on the nails. I'm aware that <laughs> Florence Pugh did not have coloured nails in the movie. But honestly, I bought these from Amazon thinking like, 
I'm not a colouring person. I don't want to spend loads of money. I can't remember how much these were, but I, I'm assuming they, they send these out everywhere. I don't know if you can get these in the US, but given that it's Amazon Basics, I would almost say that yes, you can. Um, they come in this tin. Those are the colours. On the surface, they seem great. You know, good times. Guys, using these was like carving my name into a fucking tree, right? Do not recommend. Not even for kids, to be honest. Like, my hand was hurting trying to get the payoff of these. So, don't worry, I'm not going to start giving you in-depth reviews of colouring pencils. It was more just to say that I recommend this but not this. This sucked. Darren Brown's audiobook, by the way, I also recommend. I'm having a great time with that, which is really funny because I have it on paperback in the cabinet. But I thought it's just one of these things where if I want to read, I'm probably not going to pick that one. So let's just get through it on audiobook, experience something from like a book that's narrated by that author and then carry on from that. So that's been my experience so far. Right, shall we move on to the next thing? Which I don't know what that is, but I need to put all this food away now. Oh, getting stiff in my old age. My tender age of 34. Right. What I'm about to do is I'm going to try something a little bit new. I'm about to make up a DIY pest spray that I saw on Facebook. I don't know if it's gonna work, and I am genuinely gonna risk it all over all of my plants. So the things you need for said DIY spray, which I can only assume it's for spider mites generally. That's fine, that's the only real pest I get. I have some dish soap, pretty standard, pretty staple in a pest mix. I have some isopropanol alcohol, so alcohol, ethanol. I'm assuming it's the same as ethanol, I guess. And it is water soluble. And I also have this. Now this is where I believe this differs from essentially a regular mix, okay? So this is not neem oil. I do have neem oil, it's up there on top of the cabinet. This is mineral oil. This is slightly different. I believe you use this to, you like put oil back into like chopping boards, stuff like that. I actually have a knife in the drawer that has a wooden handle and I put it through the dishwasher and it's gone all nasty. This would probably be fantastic for that. But it, it's, uh, I think it's like food safe, whatever it is, like it's fine. So Teddy, I cannot do anything without these cats. It's driving me insane. So this is kind of the difference. This is what I think is different. And it, honestly, if this works, it's gonna be so much better because neem sucks. I'm sorry, but neem just sucks. So I'm hoping this is really, really good. So the recipe is apparently, what have we got? We've got two tablespoons of this, which is mineral oil. No, no, come on. Right, I had to put the cat out. <laughs> So we have two tablespoons of this, which is mineral oil. I got this on Amazon. It's not a lot of it, admittedly. I probably should have bought more, but I didn't want to buy it if it wasn't going to work. So we have two tablespoons of that. We then have the same amount, equal measures, two tablespoons of dish soap. I'm using blue, right? Mainly because my little dispenser for the kitchen that I push down and get soap out of is also blue. And trust me, if I don't top it up with the same color, what you think happens does not happen, it, it turns nasty. So I have blue, but it's just dish soap. Then, so if you hear anything, it's just the cat wanting to be in. Then obviously we have the alcohol, just so you can see it. So this you need a cup of and then a cup of water. So it, it's different really to, you know, a normal mixture. My experience with DIY pest sprays is typically you know, it, this is, this, sorry, this is all I've got. This is mainly water. There'd be like a drop of dish soap and maybe a tablespoon of, of neem oil or something like that. So I'm kind of curious to see how this goes. I do actually have some experience of using alcohol on my plants. My Kentia palms next door, they still have them to be honest. I had a bit of an outbreak of mealybugs. So what I did was I bought like an alcohol spray, actually. I've got it over here. I actually bought this, uh, it's like a sanitizer spray, but I got it so I could spray literally alcohol on the, the mealy bug. And it, it did kind of work, to be honest. Obviously I haven't done it enough, so I haven't got rid of them all, but I did find that that worked. So the theory behind this does make some sense to me. I assume that obviously the dish soap, you usually put it in to break surface tension in the water so that the, you know, the oil and the water can mix, because obviously this is oil this is water, this is water soluble, so we'll call it water for now. Um, so we're gonna try it. I've got high hopes, and if it goes wrong, we will have to cope with 
weeks and weeks of my plants looking terrible. If it goes well, I can tell you about it. I will obviously keep you updated on this sort of stuff and check in with you, but I'm really hoping this works because my alternate pest method, it's, I'm pretty sure it's not even legal in the UK. So it's certainly not safe for in here. So we're just gonna mix it up, shall we? I'm gonna do a cup of water first. I think I have these measuring things. We're gonna struggle because that's quite a lot of water to put in. So that's what, 250 mils. That's all I need to know. One cup is 250 ml. This is probably 500 mils. So I'm gonna put slightly less in given I know this is a 500 ml really crappy spray bottle. Obviously you kind of need more uh, of this. So I'm gonna put slightly less in um, and just adjust the mixture a little bit. There, I'm gonna put about this much in. This is maybe half, maybe a little bit less. I'm then going to Probably not measure it then in that case, since I know this is 500 mils. Oh, I need to break the seal on the top, how irritating. Oh, you can, you can. Oh, never mind, I don't have to cut into it at all. Yay! So I'm actually gonna, oh yeah boy. I'm gonna just pour this in and take it to maybe like here or something. So I am gonna put quite a bit in, like so. Da 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 da. That'll do. I'd rather have less and not, you know, have any problems than do too much. So that's that in. Now we've got the oil and the dish water, but I think, again, I'm gonna eyeball it. I've got stuff to measure it, but the second I put one or the other on this, it's going to be an absolute raging nightmare. So I am actually gonna eyeball it. But I know that's 100 mil, it won't need much, so. That's at least one tablespoon, I would say. A little bit more, just to make sure, because the oil is probably doing a lot of the work as well as the alcohol. Like, I, I do completely understand why this recipe has alcohol in it. So I've used about that much out of the top, and it's 100 mils. So we're doing that. And then, you can see why I didn't want to use spoons. More of this than what you think, a little bit more. Ooh, that'd be more than enough. I've now got a blue bottle. I really hope that this does not go all over my plants. Do I top it up with water or alcohol? Mm, I'm gonna say water to be on the safe side, so I'm gonna top that up a little bit, just to be on the safe side. So really, I've taken a recipe and I haven't exactly followed it, but <laughs> who knows, guys, who knows? I do these things so you don't have to, so I know what's gonna happen when I shake this. Oh my God, don't be leaking. Do not be leaking. Oh my goodness me, no. I'm gonna try and spray this while it leaks everywhere. Oh my God. <gasps> it squirted. <laughs> okay. You know, it happens. It happens, guys. You know? It is with great bravery, guys. I'm gonna try this on plants in here and we'll see. This is continuously leaking. Oh my God, it's obviously the pressure. Uh, if I use the pressure, maybe it'll stop leaking. This is it, by the way. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not the biggest fan. I can definitely smell the alcohol. So it's nice and strong at least, but let's move you over here and let's get spraying. Okay. Ugh. So, I guess here goes. I mean, it looks very pretty in the bottle. We'll see. Here goes nothing. What's my squirter like? No. No, too tight. Oh God. That's quite a lot. Obviously I will have to mop the floor after this, clearly. That's another reason why I do it when the cats are asleep. Now these plants here have actually had spider mites and I'm hoping I've got them. Oof, I can definitely smell the alcohol, so if you're sensitive to smells, this is not, not good for you, to be honest. It's, it's not bad for you, but you know what I mean, it's not, it's not the vibe you're looking for. But guys, if it works, hell yeah. Hell yeah. So I'm just sort of spraying everything. I'm really hoping that this doesn't give me like, oh, sorry, you can't see me anymore. I'm really hoping this doesn't give me like leaf burn or something like that um, with the sun, but luckily we're kind of in winter. 
Um, at the end of the day, guys, if this goes wrong, it is on me. It is on me, not you. So this is why we do these things, right? You probably don't have spiders, but you can have a little, little coating of it. Ow. Oh, the alcohol. Woo! -hoo. Damn. Oh, my precious connection. This definitely had spider mites. This is 100% had it. Not spray it too close over here. Yeah. I mean, I think the bits that have caught it, funny enough, are low down, and I find that really weird, but they have. I mean, personally, if I was a pest, I would not want to live through this. I'll be honest with you, this would suck. Because if nothing else, they would probably suffocate. Oh, it's a new leaf that. Ooh, do you see this? Ooh. Oh, yeah, boy. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Come here, people. Can you see this shit right here? Look at this. This is how gorgeous this plant is, by the way. This is awesome. If you have not seen my recent videos where I've identified it for you, this is Thormatophyllum African Fantasy. So it's not a philodendron. I'm gonna keep him up there so he grows nice and tall, actually. It's not a philodendron, but often confused for philodendron, a lot of the Thormatophyllum stuff. Right, God, I'm gonna die in a minute. That kind of is most, if I put you back here, most of my collection sprayed. So I haven't done stuff over there because just there's some water and there's some stuff down there, so I haven't touched those, but generally, mm-hmm, love that for me. Um, I'll do the cabinet and then it's probably time to shut the door on the kitchen, let this drip and do its thing, and then we're going to sort some plants upstairs. So we'll do that, but uh, I mean, it literally looks like it's raining in here. I might have gone, I might have gone a bit overkill. I won't lie, like that's how much is left. But, but you can really, really smell it. It smells like a bar in here. Right, something else I want to show you, two seconds. So another thing, oh, I should spray this guy because he definitely has spider mites actually. I need your advice. Don't mind the, uh, you know. <laughs> So this guy, I, I showed you him on a video a while ago and he was he was beautiful. He was everything you would want from, by the way, a philodendron Dean McDowell. And we took him to a show and he got battered, and I mean battered, in the back of a van, right? So this was his newest leaf. When I say it was so juicy, so perfect, so plump, so sexual, and it got snapped. Genuinely gutted. Not only that, but these have kind of gone, like, look at the state of this. Like, everything has just gone completely horrific. So, at the minute, I'll show you how he was planted. Because, honestly, he looked great. All these were staked up in nice positions. He looked, guys, he looked the sex, right? But obviously, he doesn't now. He's got some spider mites. I don't know how active they are, but they're definitely there. So, he's, he's got a bit of a problem anyway. I am debating cutting off basically his leaves, I think. And maybe I will, because he actually is planted all the way to this end of the planter. I'm debating taking him, chopping him in half, putting him in a small planter and just letting him grow out and just starting him off again. Like he will live again, but I don't really know what to do with him other than that. I will spray him today while I get your advice on what to do with him because I guess some leaves will probably will help him grow in the meantime when I'm away. But I'm really gutted about this because he was planted up ready to go. He was all perfect. Honestly, if you'd seen my seen my videos in the shops on the last few videos I've done, then you will know how pretty he was. And this is a real big shame, but what can you do? So I'm gonna give him a quick spray, but over there, and then we will head upstairs, I think. So I'll move him, but let me know what you think I should do with him. Because I think that's probably the best course of action. Do you know what I mean? Okay. He definitely has spideys. I just don't know how active they are. So, we'll just have to see, really. Ugh, God, this is so strong. I mean, this petiole is just absolutely done. I'm so sad, guys. 
Don't get me wrong, I know with Dean McDowell, it's gonna come back so fast. So I'm not actually concerned. Chop them in half, maybe. A little bit of nurture system number three. Feed him as normal. He'd be right as rain. He'd be right as rain. So, just in case there's any nasties. I wonder if you can use this on gnats. How good would that be? I do have a few gnats. Interesting. That would be so cool if it worked on gnats. Oh. I mean, it should, right? It really should. I can't see why it wouldn't. Hello. Unexpectedly jumping in here the next day just to give you an update on that spray. Excuse me, cat. So all the leaves have a beautiful waxy shine. Look at this. They actually look really pretty, to be honest. That's the Monstera Thai. There's no smell, smell's all gone. This is an anthurium I sprayed. That's only wet because I've just got a wet thumb. There's no, you know, weird lookingness to it or anything. It, to be honest, it looks slightly better than Neem. This is the other plant, Philodendron Hybrid. Another Monstera there. Like, I'm actually impressed. This is the other Anthurium. Gorosum looks like it's never been touched. Begonia looks good. This looks really cool as well. Look how beautiful and waxy this looks. Obviously that's a new leaf, but obviously the older, even crummy ones look good. It all just looks quite sexy, to be honest. I didn't spray that Monstera there, so fair enough. But it all just looks really nice. When I smell the leaf up close, I can't smell a single thing. So, so far, calling it a win. Look at this. It's all good. Sorry, my cat. Teddy, stop it. Sorry, that's all my filming gear. So glam. Hello, hi, and welcome to a bit of a secret room. Now, let me tell you, this room is so small, I can barely show you around it. I'm gonna pick the camera up in a minute, but basically, I have a bedroom in my house that I've put some plants in to look after. And basically, the back of the room is like wardrobes and just storage and just crap. So this is the most unesthetic thing you've probably ever seen in your entire life. But I will take the camera off the tripod and just kind of show you what I've got going on. But basically, we're going to water this today. I don't even know what you're going to be able to see of me watering it, but... So you'll see what I mean, guys. This here, I mean, it's a shelf full of various things, mainly variegated and Sony Eye. There is a couple of things pop in there. There is a variegated UPI right there. That's on that shelf. Then we go down here. Bunch of things. King of Clarinervium, which I'm really hoping to rehab. Good old Delta Force, obviously. There's a couple of things back there. Don't know if you can see them. One of them is Anthurium Fairchild back there. A couple of Mysterious Dark Boy. Enough Gloriosum to kill me. These are doing very badly. They got underwatered, so I'm rehabbing them here. Down here, it's quite interesting. We have Philodendron Bipenifolium Aurea with some, <coughs> hang on, sorry. With some Tetrasperma in the background. Here, very special, I have some Monstera green on green. Can you see this? Oh yeah, you can. Obviously this looks beaten up, but it's not the point it's to propagate from. So that's Monstera green on green. Another one here that looks quite nice, look. I'm propagating from him. We have some sprouts. Some sprouts on the way. This is in my pond, by the way, if you're wondering. That's doing all right. Obviously everything needs a water. Here, oh I love this, I love this. I don't even think I could stand back far enough for this. I believe me, you are zoomed out, guys. You are zoomed out. So we have, I can't remember the name of him. That weird bluey looking uh, philodendron from the shop. I have here a wonderful philodendron weeks red. Not weeks red, why did I say weeks red? I know why I said weeks red. <laughs> a summer glory, sorry, from growing out. Down the side, this is some philodendron glory also, I'm just regular. Um, I believe a Anthurium Bessii AF. Many, many Gloriosum. Again, some of it's doing well, some of it isn't. It's just been neglected a bit, so it's come here to sort of perk it up. I need to propagate all of this and go through it. He's very cute though, look at him. Yeah, as you can see, oh, it's a new leaf. There we go. Coming through, coming through. We have more up here that are more ready to go, these ones, I would say. Um, some Anthurium here. He's a bit unhappy. He might have pests, I don't know. I can't remember what his name is. It's like an Anthurium papillolamium or whatever hybrid. Um, I think that's Bigfoot by Blue Pappy. 
Uh, he's probably the same as him. There's a few things down here is quite interesting as well. Again, don't mind all the crap in the background, that's kind of my point. Down here we have a few different things. We have like a monster and white, white monster, sorry, can't speak today. We have some Aurea there. I just pan down so you can see a little bit better. More white monster, uh, some bloody rocks flame there. This should be large form variegated, except it hasn't, obviously. Same thing here. You can tell by looking at that leaf, look, it's large form. Look how different that is. Look how different that is. Um, over here, this is Philodendron Bill Tie crossed with L Chocolate Red. It is the only one I have. Um, I've got a beautiful mint here that needs cut. Look. Look what's happened. Look what's happened. It's come out too minty. Well, that's another white monster there. Oops, sorry. That's another white monster there that's done very well. Oh god, there's stuff everywhere. An Albo. Why not? We have a Thai Constellation. This is actually one of the original ones I ever had, so I wanted to keep him. Some more very good Gloriosum and some more Monstera down there. Oh, another white monster look coming in. Very pretty, more Gloriosum. Again, I know these are dog-eared. They are here to rehab, so yeah, they will be. This, I don't know what this is. This is like an unknown Anthurium I've got. It's not crystalline in it. It is a little bit of something else in it. I brought it over here, but it, I brought it during a new leaf coming out and I had to cut him and he, he's gone. He, he's not very happy to say the least, um, but that's him. Delta Force not looking too good. You, you get the vibe of the collection here. These, that's not Delta Force, it's a hybrid, I think. Probably with, uh, it looks like Clarinervium. Check that out, check him out. Some other cool things at the back. Again, probably hybrids. Some Palladiflorum there, probably. Oh, that's some Spiritus in with it, why not? Um, my blue boy. I brought him, look at him. Look how cool he is, we love to see him. There's another Delta up there. Um, oh, this beautiful specimen that I probably can't even get far back enough to show you, but look at him, look how long he is, just to show you my hand on him. Oh, and look at the tip of him, yes. So what else? Oh, I have a philodendron hanging up there. I mean, it's just all very claustrophobic in here. We have some horrific looking things in here. This is Philodendron Wars Wixii, and it was growing so bad in the unit. I've neglected it so many times. I'm gonna chop him back completely, you know, back down here, and I'm gonna cut him. I'm gonna start him again properly. So he looks terrible, but he's here to be chopped, basically. Obviously, more Delta Force there. Uh, this guy definitely has spider mites. I know he does. Can we see them? Uh, they're not really on that leaf, that's quite funny. And then that leaf. Ooh, look at that, that's not looking good. So yeah, there's a few things to fix and sort. VCI there as well. This whole room needs organized and you know, whatever. Um, but until such time, I just have to keep it alive, basically. I just have to keep it alive and water it. Otherwise, it's all going to die. Like, I need you to know how claustrophobic this room actually is. Like, it is, it is tiny. Like, I don't even know how I can tour it. I have a 10 millimeter lens on and I'm only just getting you guys in, so I don't really know. I don't really know. Oh shit, I need to do more over here. Oh, he's cool. Love him, love that for him. We probably have some more in, I think. I feel like the more I put in now, the less I put in later. Oh shit. Why not? Honestly, this, it is as claustrophobic in here as it looks. There is this shelf here, there is, you know, a set of three, so two of these Ikea bits goes plus one on that side, same on that side, and then a tiny little table under the window. Like, there is not much, but I want to show you some of the, the nice things I have in here. So, 
Some of you, I should not have watered before doing this. This was silly. Some of you might remember this. This has grown so well. This is Raffidophora something or other. I don't even know what it is, you know. I haven't got a clue, but look at him and look how well he's growing. So he's like a, he's not a no ID. He will have an ID. I'm just not sure what he is, basically. I have a whole bunch here of hybrids, I think, between Anthurium, is it Lecanera, whatever, whatever the hell it is, Leconurum, something like that, and Delta Force. So you can kind of, well, I say the Leconurum, it was the hybrid I have. So it's Clarinervium by Leconurum by Delta, I think, some, somewhere around that region. But it's the seedlings, because these are all from seed, they've done really well. Like that one's really looking a lot like the Clarinervium hybrid. And then this one's looking a little bit more Delta-y. Look at this. So you've got that there that just looks a little bit different. And you've got that that looks more like you know, the other parent, but this is what seedlings are all about, guys. This is what it's all about. The other one I have here is Clarinervium by Delta, so it's less of a, a muddied cross. And look how he's growing out at the moment. He's growing out really nice. I can definitely see the Delta. I can't see a ton of Clarinervium, but he's looking really cute. Love him. These all need separated, by the way. Oh my God. So I took this from shop. I used to have this plant years ago. It is actually my plant from years ago, but I cut his like a little bit of uh, growth from a runner off. And I really want to grow them out here and get them really big. And I'm really excited. So this guy here, this is not Monstera Escalito. This is actually Monstera Panati Partita. Look, he looks a bit, I know he's growing up the wall. He was very neglected, but that's actually who he is. So I've taken a cutting for from him and I plan to grow him out to make him quite sexy. So for now he's living on the bottom run there's so many things in here. I have loads of weird anthuriums. Oh my god, one of these queens. I have to show you one of these queens. Oh my god, oh my god. But you need to see how beautiful this queen is. Sorry, when you hear things that is, it's water hitting the floor with some protective film over it. That's what the noise is you're hearing. Look. Look at that, how beautiful is that? How beautiful is that, oh my god. Um, oh, I will show you this um, Summer Glory up close because I got gifted it. I'm very happy about it because he's grown out really well. I mean, he still looks a bit meh. So these here, these back leaves are what were given to me. And then I think I've had, I've had a couple of leaves since. There's actually a physical spiderweb on this. So that's an older leaf as well. I think I've had it since the last three or four leaves maybe, but look how cute he comes out. I hope this comes off on camera. I realize the lights are really not great. But that's how he's coming off. So he does come in like a bronzy sort of tone. But he's very, very pretty and I like him very much. Very, very much. Um, this Bessie I, again, I brought him because, oh my God. I brought him because I liked the first one so much and Wow, okay. I brought him here because I like the first one so much. I just wanted to bring another one here because it, it is growing, minus the spider mice downstairs, it is growing very well for me. And I just think this is brilliant. Like, ignore the state he's in. How nice is he? How nice is he? Where did he live? He lived here, didn't he? There is genuinely like a huge array of stuff here. It's a little bit crazy. Oh, I have some of these as well. Hang on. Why I'm using this as a catch part, it's got holes in it. But I've been growing out quite a few of these. I've got a lot of cuttings of these that I need to get through. And I can't remember what it what this is, but it's a variegated skin dapsus. It's been a long time since I've had anything to even do with these. So I can't remember what it's actually called. But look at it. Skin dapsus aurea. I don't know. Look at him though. And believe me when I say I've got some fantastic cuttings of this plant. So you can see some of the cuttings poking through there a little bit with some variegation on. But if I'm able to, sorry, kicking the camera. This is literally, look at the yield I'm having off these cuttings. You see this? Look how nice this is. I've even got a nice little chunky one here as well. Like the yield I'm getting off these are fantastic. And I absolutely will be taking one for downstairs, I think. I really want to do like a raffle with stuff as well. Not like that skin dapsus, but some other plants and really fancy doing it. It might have to be UK only though, which I know is not great, um, but I might do that. I'm kind of enjoying having plants 
here in the house. I mean, I enjoy my downstairs plants in the house more than what I'm enjoying these. That's just because it's very claustrophobic in here. Like if this was more spacious, I would come in and walk through it more and like check it out. But I'm not really checking these plants out very much. Look, it's so good. Very good, Gloria. Awesome. It looks light because the light's actually coming through the leaf. Look, if I actually cover up the leaf, you'll see that it's not light. It's quite nice. So many things, so many things. Oh, how's he doing? Because I've not really given him a look. Now I had him downstairs. Was he here for my plant tour, I think? I had him downstairs and I brought him up only because my shelves were getting a bit full and I didn't know where to put things. I might put him in the living room or back downstairs, but I, I don't really know, but I need to tell you how nice he's growing. Like, so look at some of the new leaves here. Hang on, let me try and... I don't have to, a microphone to worry about, which is really nice. Hey, can you see this? Look at this! Oh, this is variegated philodendron heteracium, by the way. I used to call it scandens. Everyone showered at me, so I stopped doing it. Um, he's not variegated all over. I mean, a lot of this doesn't look variegated, but when you actually get up to it, I cover my face, you'll see that it actually is. But since I fed it just a bit better, it's it's gone much more variegated. Can you see that? Look at that, that's the tits. That looks a bit like eel manii variegation. So I like him. He could be bushier in the top, but when I say that he's had neglect, I... Oh my god, guys. Oh my god. He's had a lot, but his new bits are coming in really nicely. I think Amber wants some of this? Or is it something else? No, she doesn't want some of this. She might want some of this. If you want some of this, I'll give you some of this. I think she wanted some variegated micans that's downstairs, but I need to like look and see how good the, the variegation payoff is. But I really like this, you know, this probably isn't for everybody, but I like it because it's subtle and when it's less variegated, I, I borderline prefer it actually, although this is very nice. So it reminds me a little bit of like Monstera Mint, a little bit of like Monstera Green on Green. It's like a really nice sort of in the middle vibe, look at the state of him. He's not doing brilliant. To be honest, he's, he's in here so he can sort of face a window and then grow a little bit better, if that makes sense, because, you know, he just needs the time, he needs the space. I'm like grabbing things in pots now because I'm recognising I'm getting water all over the floor and although it will dry, it's not ideal. This guy, I am desperate to have downstairs on my shelves. But I cannot put him there when he's like this, in this gammy pot. He needs sorting out. So my amazing moss poles that I've been using for the other plants, I want to repot him and get him all sexy on this. If I had time today, I'd probably do it. Or, you know, I mean, the amount of things I have to repot, it's not, it's not funny. It's not funny. There's propagation to do, there's repots to do, you name it. But I really do want to get him done. Oh yeah, flower, obviously. Okay. Um, but look how nice he is. And he's my only King Anthurium, you know. I don't have another one. This is it now. This is him. I'll probably never buy another one in. This is it. So, <laughs> this thing here I want to show you. It is the most mahoosive chunk of my Philodendron Plowmanii that's actually on the floor. That you will see very soon. Honestly, I think you'll see next week. I, I'm not sure. You might have already seen it. But this is a massive, and I mean a massive, chunk. You see this? from that, like that is goofy. And he's putting me out a lovely leaf. This is the kind of plant money eye that doesn't have the silver on it. I don't know why, I just really like him. So that's where he is. I've got two of these that are just sort of spouting away. So we love him, we absolutely love him. Unfortunately, this room is so claustrophobic. Like, look around, like, look, you know? Like, it's tough. Like, if I point you down, yeah, cool, you can see things on the floor. But it's tough, guys, it's tough. It's tough getting around. There you go, there's the other side of the room there. Right, like, difficult, difficult. So I don't really know. Oh, hang on, I'll show you things like this. I'll have to come up with a plan of action. I can move some stuff down here and stuff, but I can't really, you know, move it. Well, let me spray some of these while I'm talking to you. I haven't quite finished watering, but I will finish it off camera because you can't see anything that I'm doing, so what is the point? What is the point? There you go. Oh, Mysterious Dark Boy is chilling. He needs, oh my god, he needs sorted so bad. Um, but I just have not had the time yet. Oh, this doesn't burn. See, I'm not worried about spraying in here because cats aren't allowed in here. It's a no cat zone. So I'm quite happy about that. I mean, I don't think anything's going to burn with this sort of stuff. I don't know, you know. 
Love it. The smell. This, if you're going to use this stuff with those ratios, bear in mind I put more water in. I hope you like vodka. That's all I'll say, guys. I hope you like vodka because Jesus, it's it's a lot. I also hope you don't have any cuts on your fingers because oh my god, really bad. That's not something you're gonna want. So thank you for watching this chores video. I'm aware it's not 100% planty. That's just kind of look of the draw this week. I had less sort of planty things to do. I will try and come up with a really cool way of like showing you in here. Maybe it has to be like a GoPro or something so you can actually see what's going on. It's just very, very difficult. I can move some things, but I wouldn't say I could move like a ton of stuff. So thank you very much for watching this. I don't even think it was chores. It's more like, it's closer to a day in the life, to be honest, but I appreciate all of your feedback. I mean, not, plants obviously don't take up all of my day. They don't. I mean, does it for anybody, you know what I mean? So this is just look at the draw as to what I had to do today that was planty. So let me know what you think about this in the comments below. I will be reading your comments. Honest feedback is absolutely fine. I want to put things on camera that obviously you enjoy. God, I have to get out of this room. Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for watching this chores video, guys. I know it was long. I know it was long. Thank you again to Fume, the sponsor of today's video. If you're interested, the link is in the description. Feel free to check it out. And I guess that's it. I'll see you next week. Bye.